welcome back to my lovely channel in today's video i'm going to be doing a story time you guys on how me and my friends basically almost was kidnapped a few years ago more like a decade ago but it feels like yesterday okay so we're gonna get right into it right before we get into this video make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you like this video turn on your post notifications you guys so as soon as i post a video youtube will alert you and leave a comment down below and let me know if you enjoyed this crazy story time this is something that's happened back in 2012 this was absolutely 10 years ago. I was 14 years old and it was totally unexpected. So let's get right into the story. This is something I've never forgotten no matter how many years have went by because it stuck with me. And you know, it's like all the positive and good things that happened in your life growing up as a child, you forget about it. But the bad things, for some reason, it just stays with you and you can't forget about it and you carry it with you for the rest of your life. So hold on, you guys. If you hear crying, that is my dog. He likes to turn up when I'm filming a video. Button, tape it down. So let's get started. Now, it was a sunny day in Harlem. Um, the end of the year, I was in eighth grade. You know, I was getting ready to, to graduate and to attend the high school, you know, that I went to, which was Cardinal Spelman in the Bronx. And, you know, it's after school. I'm chilling with my friends. You know, we coming from the library because every day after school, before we go home, we go to the library, we chill, we get on the computers, listen to music. That was our chill spot. Now, I can't tell you how many times we got kicked out of that library, but we was chilling. We was turning up in there. So we decided to take a nice stroll to the park. And this particular park was called Riverbank. If you're from Harlem, you know. So we went to Riverbank and, you know, we chilling, you know, we walking around the track, we trying to figure out what we going to do. And me and my friends were all in a circle. We in a circle and we talking, laughing, chopping it up. Now, one thing about Star and my parents trained me to be this way. I am very attentive and alert to my surroundings. So no matter where I'm going, I'm looking left to right. I'm trying to see who am I around, you know, where I'm going you know, who, who's going to be there, you know, what's happening around me. I'm very, very alert. And so me and my friends are talking in a circle and I see something by the bushes moving. Something moving very slowly and very subtle. But I don't want to look just yet because I'm like, this has to be something like something that I wasn't expecting. And so we're talking and talking and I look to the bushes again. And this time I dare to look and I see this strong, buff looking African man, dark skin, and he's on his phone. And, you know, anybody could be on their phone, but it's the way that he was looking. You guys, he was literally on his phone, surrounded by bushes, peeking at me and my friends like this and talking and then peeking and talking. So at this point, I already know what it is. As a woman, as a young woman growing up, I have intuition. I already know what it is. So I'm like, how am I going to tell my friends that there's a man in the bushes and I believe he's following us without them making it obvious? Because, you know, when you tell black people not to look, what do they do? They look. <laughs> so I'm panicking inside. My sister's there. My friends are there. I'm panicking. And um, what I basically do is I'm like, hey, y'all, you know, let's walk this way. And I slowly tell them, I'm like, yo, there's a man in the bush and he's following us. So we start walking out of the park. There's a long hill we got to walk up to get up out that park, right? And so me and my friends, you know, we walk in, we walk in real slow because we try not to make it obvious because we know that there's a man on his phone that's following us. And if he's on his phone, that means he's calling for backup. So now we have more things to look out for. Let's get into it. It's real hot. We walking up the hill and um, I look back, you guys, and we don't see that African man. So we like, oh, OK, we good. We got away. We good. A couple of blocks further we walk. I look back and I see him. And now he's on his phone following us, walking real fast, following behind us. So I, I tell my girls, I'm like, yo, he's still following us, bro. We got to find somewhere to go. Like, this man is crazy. I don't know who he's on the phone with. I'm scared. Just, just let's not make it obvious. Let's just walk. It's, it's daylight out. Let's just walk. What's the worst that could happen? So we heading for the library, okay? So, you know, where I'm at, 
the cars, you know, I'm 14 years old. I just started going home by myself. I'm with my friends. We're crossing two-way streets. The cars start, you know, going by real fast and we got to wait, you know, for the light to turn green. Meanwhile, this man is following us and he's getting closer and closer, you guys. So I start praying. And all of a sudden, I'm in a panic, right? And I drop my bag because we're walking so fast. I drop my bag and all my money falls on the ground. And I look back and I see the African man getting closer to me on the phone. And I see a car pull up. And I'm like, okay, it's either the bag and my money or it's my life. The bag and money is my life. So I'm young. So I start to scramble, pick up the change. And I just see him getting closer and closer and closer to the point where my friends start running. And I think I, I, I think I saw like a handcuff. He took a handcuff out. And th at that point, y'all, I said, forget about that chump change. I didn't even have a job at the time. I said, forget about that chump change. I took my bag and I ran. And here's the crazy part, you guys. My friends ran ahead of me. While I was picking up that change, they ran ahead of me because they seen him getting closer. This is just a learning lesson for all. When it's a life or death situation, leave your phone. Leave your money. You can get money back. You can't get your life back. You can buy another phone. You can't buy another life. Sometimes we're so attached to material items that we're willing to risk to get it back, to risk to retrieve it, not knowing that those things are replaceable, but we are not. And so as he's getting closer and he has like this handcuff in his hand, which is telling me that he wanted to handcuff me and it probably dragged me into that car or something, I'm, I'm really not sure. I left the change on the ground and me and my friends, we all ran into the library. And so we didn't tell nobody what was going on. Probably nobody would have believed us. We don't know. We stayed in the library for about three to four hours after school because that was our safe place. And we knew that we needed to stay together and not split up because this man could be anywhere. And this is how you know he had ill intent. And he was calling for backup because not only did a car pull up, but this man followed us to the library, right? But he never went inside of the library. And why didn't he go inside of the library? Because the library had security guards. The library always had police officers because there was so many fights and, and confrontations going on. So this is how, you know, our lives were spared and saved last minute. Of course, God was always with us, but I just thank God for giving us that wisdom to think fast on our feet. Because normally in situations like that, everybody splits up like, okay, he's following us. You go this way, I go that way. I'm going home, you go home. But we stuck together as a group. We ran when we had to. And we, we went to a place where we had safety, covering, and protection. And it was just overall close call. Because you guys look at it. What if I didn't notice him in the bushes? What if he would have called for backup and I didn't notice him? And, and multiple men could have came out and dragged me and my friends to a place unknown. What if I wouldn't have made it home that night? What if when I was picking up the change, he would have ran up and caught me instead of me getting away at the last minute? What if? Would I be here today to tell this story? Only God knows. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to have had these experiences that I'm sharing now as a story time. And I'm not trying to make it into no sob story, but it's just crazy things to look out for. Be aware of your surroundings. Ladies, I'm guilty of this. Sometimes give it a rest, girl. Take out those ear pods. Stay off your phone when you're outside. Stop looking down at your phone when you're on the train, when you're at the bus stop, when you're crossing the street. Stop being on that phone. You never know who's been watching you for blocks. You never know who's following you. You never know who's plotting against you, who's planning against you. Every smile and every laugh ain't genuine, baby. We got to be alert. And most importantly, we got to stay prayed up. There's so many black men and women going missing, so many children, so many young teens and adults. What I went through could have been a situation of kidnapping and maybe even sex trafficking. But I'm just happy I got away. And it was only by the grace of God I got away. Because that man, he had what? A handcuff. He was walking closer and closer. And, and child, it was to the point where my friends didn't left me, child. My sister was the only one lagging behind. And when I see he was getting too close, I dipped. 
You never know when it's your last day. You never know when the unexpected can happen. So stay prayed up, y'all. Stay careful. Stay alert. And I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I was only 14. I wasn't expecting anything like that to happen. That was only something I saw on television shows. <laughs> okay? But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I love you guys. Star gang or no gang. And until next time, peace.